Prime Minister Stewart saddened over the recent tragic deaths. Hundreds of teaching appointments announced. And in sports, the Windies batting their downfall as they lose the series in Sri Lanka. Credible. Balanced. Committed. This is the CBC Evening News. And a very good evening to you. I'm Lisa Lloyd with the Monday, October 26th edition of the CBC Evening News. We do apologize for the delayed start in our top story. Prime Minister Frundell Stewart has paid condolences to the families who lost, lost loved ones over the weekend, describing Sunday especially as a difficult day for Barbados. As Lisa Broom tells us, he made the comments at the South Alive political meeting at the Dighton Griffith School. News broke early yesterday morning of the horrific car accident that claimed the lives of four young women. That accident happened mere meters away from the Prime Minister's official residence, Ilara Court, as the women were returning home after a night of celebrating a member of the group's birthday. We can only guess at the sense of loss and the trauma being felt by their families, and we condole with them, those families tonight. I'm sure that the MPs for that part of St. Philip will be doing their work to assist and to stabilize those families in these very difficult circumstances. The Prime Minister also extended condolences to the Smith family of Farm Road St. Philip, a body suspected to be that of 75-year-old Marcel Smith, who went missing for close to two weeks, was pulled from a ravine at Halton Plantation in St. Philip late Saturday. But later in his presentation, the Prime Minister gave party faithfuls early warning, saying that the Democratic Labour Party is ready for general elections when the time comes. Flanked by other members of the DLP team, Mr. Stewart declared that the party can defend its record in government when the bell is rung. When the blast of war goes in our ears in 2018, you come and you, can, you will hear the explanations. We're going to run them, we're going to run them into the sea. You take it easy. If I have any disappointments in politics as the leader of the Democratic Labour Party, it is that sometimes I get the impression that some of the people around me can't wait. 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 It is coming. Wait. Prime Minister Stewart says while the economy remains stable, But because of what has gone on in our international business and financial services sector, for example, a hole was dug in our wallet in the area of our corporate tax revenue. So we don't, even though we still want to do some of the things uh, that would meet people's expectations, the will is there, but the wallet is not. When you get back there, but people, we invite people to understand. The theme of Sunday's meeting was staying the course, defining the future. Lisa Broom, CBC News. Well, that meeting also heard at least two major announcements from government ministers, one of them from Education Minister Ronald Jones, who says that over 200 teachers have been appointed to the public service, and within another three weeks, just over 200 more will receive their instruments of appointment. Mr. Jones says once the requisite legislation is laid in Parliament, another 263 teachers will be appointed. It is the first time in the history of Barbados for either education or anywhere in the public service that in one fell swoop, 416 persons were appointed in this country. In one fell swoop. And then following up, another 263. Meantime, Health Minister John Boyce says November 20th has been earmarked as a date for the long-awaited opening of the St. John Polyclinic. The 20th of November, yes, good people. 
And I've already sat with Mrs. Mara Thompson, the Right Honorable Prime Minister, and the entire cabinet, and we are going through the detailed plans of that opening. That is a victory for the Democratic Labour Party. Well, an appeal is being made for the government to address issues surrounding the dysfunctional South Coast sewage treatment plant. Opposition leader Mia Motley says that plant has been dysfunctional for more than a year and sewage is now contaminating the Graham Hall swamp. This, she says, can emerge into a possible health crisis for the country. I am asking our Prime Minister, in the interest of all Barbadians, Instruct your Minister of Finance next week to find the funds to correct the problems and to fix the equipment at the sewage plant. Because if the Water Authority does not get those funds, the situation will only go from worse to worse. Well, there was consensus among Barbados Minister of Finance and Economic Affairs Chris Sinclair and regional statisticians that national statistical systems have to be better financed. Other areas such as capacity were highlighted at the opening of the 40th meeting of the Standing Committee of Caribbean Statisticians, the 25th meeting of the Regional Census Coordinating Committee and the 8th Regional Statistical Research Seminar at United Nations House. Mr. Sinclair, for his part, called for the formation of a sustainable regional statistical gateway that we take responsibility for, not only in collecting, collating, and piling all the statistics together, but giving the normative methodologies in analyze, analyzing that particular data. Because, surprise, surprise, the world, even though it is interconnected and interdependent, does have some latent differences. Minister Sinclair says that anecdotal evidence is not enough for policy planning. It therefore behooves us in decision-making uh, roles, those of us who operate within the field itself, but those of us who have the responsibility for ensuring that resources and capacities are provided, that we work together to ensure that our national systems are strengthened that they are sustainable, and most of all, that they are transparent. Meantime, Director of Statistics at the Barbados Statistical Service, Aubrey Brown, says small island developing states are facing a number of challenges in the production of stats. Some of the major challenges faced by our department include, one, a local culture of reluctance in providing information about oneself. This applies to respondents to our various surveys, both households and establishments. Two, inadequate engagements with us by some agencies when they are changing their systems. And this affects our access to administrative records, which are required for the production of official information. Now, support at the highest levels of authority in their country would be beneficial in addressing some of these challenges. Vice President of the Barbados Union of Teachers, Rick Mark Cave, says that the past year has been challenging for its membership. He says that this is due to several ongoing issues in the educational sector. His comments came at the Union's Teachers Week church service held at the St. Lucie Parish Church. Other activities slated for the week include the John Cumberbatch Memorial Lecture and the President's Reception. As you know, we have not had a salary increase for a number of years, but we continue to teach and go to work every day, every day. We have problems with safety and health at school. We are battling those. We have, a problem with, we have the problem with cell phones, and I just learned recently there's a proposal coming on stream, and it is a proposal to have the cell phones and so forth in the school legally with restrictions. 
Acting Chief Fire Officer Errol Maynard says the Barbados Fire Service has recognized the need to focus more on preventative measures. Mr. Maynard was speaking at the opening ceremony of the Caribbean Association of Firefighters, where he pointed out the need to improve fire services across the region. We need to prevent the next fire. We need to be able to prevent the next building collapse. We need to prevent the need to rescue the next man or the next woman. As we view a new perspective, it must be focused on professional standards. Standards to be a practitioner in the industry across the region. Standards for promotion and standards for training. Meantime, Attorney General and Minister of Home Affairs Adriel Brathwaite says more emphasis must be placed on regional training. But he says that the fire service faces a challenge of not having common equipment throughout the region, which is a severe disadvantage when a natural disaster strikes a neighboring Caribbean country. If our equipment breaks down for some reason, um, warranties, etc., notwithstanding, and that in fact that we know that it is half hour from St. Lucia, half hour from Trinidad, that there's in fact um, resources available within the region um, that, can, that can assist us um, in, in that regard. Because we all know that this equipment is, is expensive, is sophisticated, um, and we, we have to ensure that we are better able um, to take care of, of what we have. Well, coming up after the break, more news. But first, we want to get your take on this question. Do you think the St. John Polyclinic will help to ease some of the burden of the QEH? You can text yes or no to short code 8111. We'll have the results for you at the end of our news. Hi, I'm Red Plastic Bag. Anyone who knows me knows I don't like coal. Sunshine rains in my country. I love it. Your first choice oh, this Christmas. Christmas for a whole lot less. There's 20% off perma, 25% off kitchen and bathroom, and 30% off all Ultima Plus paint. Plus the ever durable Travel Tax Natural for just $98. So dream in color this Christmas with Harris Banks, the Caribbean champions of color. Harris is your first choice. Color your Christmas. Coming up tomorrow, Tuesday on Morning Barbados, we will share with you at least five ways to keep your plants happy, you know, when droughty conditions exist. Yeah, when those taps are slow, the plants can still be happy. So Stephen Suski will talk with you about that. And Dr. Andrew Ford will be along to share some information on something complex. Too complex for me to say it. So he'll tell you all about it tomorrow on Morning Barbados. Join us. Start your weekend early with Q in the Community Thursday and Saturday. Join us for a special Q in the Community celebrating Education Month, October 31st at the Asphalt Grounds, the Old Bartel Sports Club from 11 a.m. Come for dancing, karaoke competition, and lots more. It's a Q weekend sponsored by Stag, the official bear of Q in the Community, and Jewers Whiskey. Tune into 100.7 FM or join our Facebook page for more details.
Students from across the island will soon get a detailed view of Barbados' development over the years. This was revealed as local artist Rashid Boudou, along with the Media Resource Department and Marcos Communications, launched a book entitled Heritage Barbados. As a means of giving back to the community, Mr. Boudou donated a copy of his book to every school on the island. The book captures scenes from past Barbadian life, and in response to changing times, Mr. Boudou is making a special effort to reshape the view of some people that Barbados has no culture. We need more government leaders to embrace the strength of what this country has and stop destroying to rebel. Stop being historians, because historians speak only of what used to be and what was the past. Be artists who paints the moment. Be photographers who archive the history as it is so you can enjoy it as it comes. Also speaking at the book launch was Minister of Education Ronald Jones, who said that there are too many lost moments in Barbadian history. He believes regardless of racial or social backgrounds, if locals are to have a greater appreciation of themselves, the lives of great Barbadians must be properly documented. Bradley Adams, even though Fab Hoyas, F.A. Hoyas has done some work, I do not think in myself that the singular work has emerged and a pioneer of the trade union or industrial relations process in Barbados. I don't think that a single work has emerged on the right excellent Earl Walton Barrow and, and all that he had done between the period of his coming into the House of Assembly, um, elected then unelected and then forming a party to which I belong. Um, and, and all that he did in the time of his life. The Barbados Public Workers Cooperative Credit Union is continuing to thank its membership in a special way. Over the weekend, the credit union's BlackRock branch hosted an appreciation day featuring mobile health checks and spa services. Branch Operations Officer Harriet Franklin explained that the event is only one of several for its members. She also disclosed that the union is offering loans at special rates for members just in time for the Christmas season. Our Christmas loans have opened, so you can come on down and make the application for your Christmas loans. We have loads of um, saving products available to our members so that you can uh, save more and invest more along with our competitive interest rates. We'll still to come and look at some of the stories making headlines across our region, but first we want to hear from you on this question. Do you think the St. John Polyclinic will help to ease some of the burden of the QEH? Text yes or no to short code 8111. We'll have the results for you at the end of our news. And you can also follow us on Twitter at CBC underscore newsroom and on our Facebook page, CBC News Barbados.